much for tuning in. So for today's video I'm taking some of my Michaels favorites and I'm recreating them using Dollar Tree materials. And if you like these types of videos I'm gonna leave my playlist below for all of my previous Dollar Tree dupes. I've duped Pottery Barn, Anthropology. I love making dupe videos and this is my first time trying Michaels and even though Michaels has a lot of clearance and coupons Sometimes they're just still a little too pricey, so I figured I would try my hand at it and I absolutely love how these turned out. My favorite is definitely the J Money grocery and hardware crate. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and you stick around by subscribing to this channel. Once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep! And please click that notification bell so you know every time I post a video. Let's go ahead and get started. My first dupe is this window panel. Originally, it is $50. It's since gone on clearance, but it is still really pricey. So I'm gonna get six of these five by seven frames from Dollar Tree. They also have them in much bigger sizes if you do wanna make a bigger window panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart and you can save the insides if you want. And then with some pliers, side cutters, whatever you have, just remove those little prongs. Now I'm gonna make sure that they are perfectly aligned and straight. And instead of adding glue to the sides, since this is a really thin frame, I'm just gonna bind them together using popsicle sticks. These are popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna add them in between or on top of every seam. Now, if I would have added this popsicle stick just a little bit lower, I wouldn't have had to cut down the third one on that row, but you live and you learn. You can cut down all of them if you want so that they're nice and straight. It's up to you. Nobody is going to see the back. So now that everything is put together, now I'm just going to flip it over and with some white chalk paint, I don't know why I am holding this off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and with a really, really dry brush, I'm just going to brush on some white so that it looks more like the Michaels one. You can skip this step if you like the natural wood, but I really wanted it to look like the Michaels one, so I just did as much as I thought looked good. And the good thing about this is that you could wipe it down. Now I do have these little wreaths from Target. These are three bucks a piece, and I got these last year, but I'm pretty sure they have them this year as well. I put them together so they look a little bit thicker hot glued them but of course you can tie them down with wire and when i was done i had this really really cool window panel the next one that i'm going to recreate are these adorable little tubs these are originally 14 bucks but dollar tree has these really cool tubs they're a bonus buy so they come five in the small pack and two in the big so you can recreate so many of these for two bucks and some change now I'm gonna take it outside and spray paint it using Rust-Oleum's Blossom White. You can also just use chalk paint and use a brush. I'm gonna set it on its side. This was actually a subscriber that suggested it years ago with another craft. And I'm gonna do the inside first so that the paint doesn't drip. This worked beautifully and, then I'm gonna keep and it and then do the outside. Weird marks the only thing i will suggest is putting something behind it because when you are spray painting it it moves around but i did get a really nice even coat without wasting a ton of spray paint and having drip marks everywhere so thank you i wish i could find the comment i appreciate that tip so much i'm gonna let it dry completely and when it's dry i did realize that there was a lot of texture this is because i used a can of spray paint that was pretty much finished so i'm gonna give it a border using cobalt blue this was purchased at Walmart. I'm also going to use a sponge brush. This is from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to blot it on the edges. Because it's textured, I can't really slide it across, but I'm just going to blot and I think this looks really good. If you've seen my original tutorial, um, the one where I make the enamel tub, then I'm using the exact same method for this one. And thank you so much to everybody who has recreated that and tagged me. I love seeing your creations. So if you have made any of the tubs, please tag me. I love it so much. So I'm going to use the exact same method for this. And when I am done making my blue border and once it is completely dry, I'm going to use 
the chest game for the feet like I did in my original tutorial. Now for the small one, I'm gonna use these. For the bigger ones, I'm gonna use the other one. If I had spray paint that matched, I would have just spray painted this, but because I had to use this, I am just going to blot on the paint, let it dry really well, and then doing a second coat. If you do a second coat too early, you're just gonna pull off the paint because this is plastic. Now this is multi-surface paint, so it is made to stick, and once it is dry, it does. Just have some patience. So now I'm just going to place it on the bottom, make sure that I space it out how I want, and I'm gonna add it using hot glue. You can also use E6000, but this is plastic on plastic. In my original tutorial, it was plastic on metal, so I just felt a little bit more secure using the E6000. This holds really, really, really well, trust me. So I'm gonna do this to both and make sure that they stand up nicely. And when I was done, I added some greenery. You can also add some pumpkins, but I think this looks gorgeous. The next dupe is this beautiful China pattern vase, which was originally $14. And I'm gonna be using this vase from Dollar Tree. It originally had an anchor on it. So I'm gonna remove the twine that the anchor was on, and then I'm gonna take it outside and give it a coat of the same blossom white that I used in my previous tutorial. You can also just use chalk paint, but I already had this on hand. And instead of moving it with your fingers, you can just take the poster board that's underneath if you're using one and move that. I wasn't thinking, I don't know what I was thinking, but that would have made my life a little easier. Now I'm gonna use the same pattern that I did for my pumpkins. I had an extra sheet and I cut it down and used a foam brush and Mod Podge from Dollar Tree. Now you can find this pattern by searching Delft pattern, China pattern, blue vintage roses. You don't have to use this one, but I did print this on regular computer paper. So I am gonna relax it a bit. And to do that, I'm just gonna spray it with a little bit of water on the back. Now I'm gonna add a generous amount of Mod Podge to the area where I want it and I'm gonna press it in. When I press it in, I'm gonna start with the folds first so that I can smooth all of those areas out and it doesn't have a harsh fold or a harsh wrinkle. If you are using tissue paper or you're using napkins, smooth out with a piece of saran wrap on top. That has been suggested so many times in my pumpkin video a year ago. Thank you so, so much. There were so many people who suggested it and it really helps. For this, you don't need it because the computer paper is a little bit more on the rough side, so you're able to handle it with your fingers if you do print it out. But if you find a napkin with a similar pattern, then definitely use a saran wrap. So I went ahead and made my way all around, and then I sealed the entire thing with more Mod Podge. When I was done, I just put a little piece of greenery on there, and I had this really cute vase. For the next one and my favorite, I wanted to recreate these crates. They're originally 48 bucks and I wanted to make something a little bit more custom. Now for this, I found these gather signs from Dollar Tree. They're actually super duper easy to take apart. You kind of just pull and it comes off really easily. Now I love that it looks like a panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the extra parts I don't need. And if something doesn't come off easily, scissors will do. Now this does bend, so what you can do is you can add a giant popsicle stick or a stir stick to the seams. But I'm gonna use the jumbo Dollar Tree stir sticks. Now I am measuring, I'm not measuring for the stir sticks, I'm actually measuring so that I can get um, the correct size for a stencil. For the stir sticks, I'm just lining them up and then I'm putting my piece on top and making my markings with a pen or a pencil. Now you can go ahead and cut this down with scissors. It cuts down really easily and straight and you would need to do one by one. You don't need to use what I'm gonna do next, but I just grab five popsicle sticks at a time, tape them together using some washi tape, and I'm gonna use my little mini saw. Like I said, you don't need this, but what I do is I check to see where the saw is going to cut, and then I make my cut. This just makes the process go by a lot easier when you're doing wood projects like this, small wood projects. And then I take off the tape and all of my pieces are nice and even. I'm gonna leave the link for that below, but like I said, you don't have to use it. And now with some hot glue, I'm just going to cover the entire thing. I used 16 pieces in total. I did cut down 17 just in case, but I made sure everything was nice and straight and now it doesn't fold. And the inside does end up looking a lot nicer when the whole thing is covered. But like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just paint the whole thing one solid color and add something to keep the seams straight. 
To make your logo, there are so many methods that you can use. Now you can go ahead and paint this one solid color and then go ahead and use poster stickers as stencils. You can paint it white and this, then just use this as your logo or you can stencil on top of this, it's up to you. They do have different sizes, so they have the smaller one and this larger one, and I think it would look really, really good. That's not the method that I'm using, but you can use it to write grocery and hardware. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to paint the whole thing black. So I'm putting this on parchment paper or wax paper, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing. The gather, is actually a sticker you can remove that but that means you have to sand this down so I did try removing one piece and I really didn't like the bottom so I'm just going to go ahead and use it as is so I'm going to cover the whole thing and to get a nice even coat it took three different coats and you're going to want to let it dry in between so that you don't pull paint off because you are basically painting on laminate this is multi-surface paint so it is meant to cover stuff like this so once I have a nice even coat, these are the fonts that I used for groceries and the word hardware. I use the font Pirata. It's free on the font.com. Every other text I use Impacta. And then for those little designs, I use Wingdings. Now this is using my Cricut, but if you don't have a Cricut, you can also watch my tutorial on how to make a farmhouse sign. I show you how to use the app called Fonto and then how to transfer everything with no issue. So this is just a clip from that video. I'll leave it below, but I am going to go ahead and use my Cricut. And with the Cricut, I'm going to use the Dollar Tree book cover. I wanted to see how this performed and it performed so well. It did cut a little deep, even though I put it on cut less, but... When I transferred it, everything stayed in place, which was pretty nice. And to transfer it, I'm going to use the Dollar Tree contact paper as transfer tape. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it, and it does a beautiful job. So if you are looking to save money, definitely consider using this instead of the Cricut brand stuff just to save yourself a little money. So I went ahead and applied it on my panel secured it down, removed my Dollar Tree contact paper, aka my transfer tape, and then with this little Dollar Tree brush, I'm gonna go ahead and brush on some chalk paint. You can use whatever paint you want. I wanted this to look a little chippy, so instead of using my regular white paint, I used my chalk paint. It ended up being a little too chippy to the point where it did smudge when I removed the stencil, even though it was dry, but that's because chalk paint is really, 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 really dry. So I went ahead and sponged that on. My sponge is a little off to the side, which is why my hands look a little off to the side. But once I removed it, I think it looked really good. Now all the little areas came out nicely and even though some areas are smudged, I think it looks really good. I took my black and I went over it. And now that I have this, I'm going to let it dry. To make the bottom piece, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to take the Dollar Tree wood puzzles. I love these things. They're nice and sturdy. So I went ahead and removed these pieces. You can also E6000 them together. And now I'm just going to bind it using some hot glue. Now I'm going to press it, making sure that it is nice and straight. I'm going to do the other side as well. And then for the sides, I'm going to use some jumbo popsicle sticks. You can also use 97 cent stir sticks from Lowe's or Home Depot, but I have these from a previous tutorial. These are from Walmart. They come in a pack of 40, I think. I'm going to cut this down and then I'm going to add it to the sides on both sides. I used three on each side and this actually ended up being really, really sturdy. I did one at the top, one at the bottom, and then the middle so that they're nice and straight. And when I was done, I had this really, really cool custom crate. You can add a middle part if you want. I left it as is. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment letting me know which one is your favorite and you'll be trying. And as usual, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I will see you on the next one.